Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Returning the Blessing, and our scripture is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, where the good tax collector writes, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. The setting of this event is near the end of Jesus' life and ministry. The religious and political forces have joined hands to seek his death. Even within Jesus' own organization, Judas has joined the evil plot. Barely a week before the crucifixion, Mary throws all caution to the wind and bestows a king's ransom type of gift on the Lord. This act of worship causes his followers consternation over Mary's extravagance. It causes curiosity among the onlookers, and it causes Jesus' heart to overflow with gladness. Which Mary of the New Testament's several is the one who pours out this blessing on Jesus is somewhat in question. The accounts differ in the Gospels, perhaps due to separate incidents. But the question as to which Mary, the prostitute, Mary Magdalene, or the sister of Lazarus, whichever, we are presented with a beautiful answer as to how our love and worship of the Lord should take form. Every Mary in Jesus' life and ministry received life from the Lord. Magdalene received the gift of forgiveness that changed her whole outlook. Jesus treated her, perhaps a common prostitute, with respect, and her life became worthwhile. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, received her brother back from the dead. Either Mary would have given all they possessed to a Jesus like that. And what I love about this account is that Mary is obscured and Jesus is lifted up. That's the true essence of worship. I bow lower, Jesus is lifted higher. Fritz was not that way. Fritz was Mrs. Grace's six-toed, 25-pound alley cat. Mrs. Grace was an elderly, homebound lady in a church I served years and years ago. When you came into the house, Fritz took pains to make sure you knew just who was in charge. He would demand attention. You can do that when you're the big cat in the house. He would demand to be scratched behind the ears, and if he didn't get it all to his satisfaction, he'd look you in the eye and dig his extra toenails into your forearm. When he was done with you, he'd walk over to Grace's chair, sit down in a self-satisfied huff. Fritz owned the place. He liked Miss Grace because she fussed over him and fed him, often. But Fritz worshipped himself. Mrs. Grace, on the other hand, worshipped God. She was a prayer warrior, continually lifting up all the members of our church before the throne. When I visited her every few weeks, she was eager to hear, quote, how our church was doing. That took the focus off her and placed it fully on the family of God and the God of her family. When she died, it was revealed just how extravagant the gift was that she poured out, leaving most of her estate to fund ministries. (laughs) She also took care of Fritz. She could have afforded a chauffeur and a better home, but Miss Grace put the resources God had entrusted to her into the work of God. Truly, this extravagant love was poured out. For you today, you hear often in worship testimony times how God has just poured down magnificent blessings. Here's a question. Do we miss times to return the blessing? 
You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.